live. So, okay. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Loretta, we see you're in here. Hey, Shanae. Can you guys see us? Drop it in the comments if you can. Ah, oh, all right. Perfect. Good, good. I'm guessing that the other session is probably just about wrapping up. And so we'll give it another few minutes here, a minute or something like that. People are starting to trickle over, but cool, cool. Awesome. Zach, it's yeah. good to be here with you, man. Uh, you know, keep it yeah. quiet. I mean, you've got children sleeping in your in your <laughs> sleeping in the background. Yep. Always yeah. fun. Yeah, good, it is good. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Cool. And uh all right. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun getting to see you in Miami the other day. That was pretty was. awesome. What a conference. I mean, thirty thousand was- people. Unbelievable, right? I know. That was crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And- it was. And, you know, and the thing that always amazes me, and I, I think this is true in your world, although I've never been to one of your live events, but, um, you know, to see people who know each other, you know, virtually, whatever, you know, yeah. uh, to get together and physically be with one another. I mean, it's electric. I mean, the, yeah. it, the excitement is, is just, yeah. So, so I'm going to encourage you to, uh, to have a live real person yeah. to to that one of these days. So. For sure. For yeah. sure. That would be a lot of fun. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know um, where where would you have it? Yeah, you, you have oh, man. Let's see. Out by you guys somewhere or possibly? West yeah, or? Portland's a pretty good hub for that. Oh. Yeah. One second, my son is talking. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's cool, good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Loretta, are they are they wrapping up over there? She's uh, Loretta's. Loretta's awesome. Okay, yeah. Some people are still kind of in the last session. They'll they'll kind of trickle over here when uh, when we when we stay on. Uh, okay, um, we've sent the uh, or we showed this video once before, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again, and then we can uh, we can roll in it, into it, but. Uh, maybe you want me to show the video first and then we can um, yeah. jump into it. Yeah, why not? I mean, it's it's a fun. This is like this video is hot off the presses. I think they made it last week for all of our tiny house owners uh, for yeah. our Grand Pacifica community. And so this is this is truly what is happening you know, right now. So, yeah, yeah it's Super very cool. exciting. Yeah, I remember uh, I, I watched it for the first time live when I was playing it for everybody. And I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> Just super cool. All right, here we go. We can always play this again at the end of the session too. I think that's a good idea. Oh, okay, great. So I'll play it now. And then since you said you'll go about 45 minutes, we'll have some time at the end and I'll toss it back on. Terrific. Here we go. And one last thing, if you mute, mute your mic, they won't get a, like an echo just during the video.
Super awesome. Well, everybody, thanks for uh, joining this session. This is Mike here with ECI Development, and we are uh, stoked to be connected with them. Honestly, they're doing some of the most amazing residential resort projects, mostly in Central America, but it sounds like they're starting to branch out. And uh, they've been doing it for years and years. And so literally, if you're interested in buying a property overseas or even just interested in that in any sort or just in general kind of due diligence on buying properties and um, having a home and all of that, uh, they're literally the experts at it. They've been doing it for years. And so there's a, a, a lot of experience and education that's learned as you kind of go along in the process and whatnot. So uh, they've ironed out a lot of the quirks and whatnot. So um, yeah, with that, Mike, I'll let you take it away. Thanks for showing, uh, letting us see that video. And um, for anybody who missed it, we'll show it again at the end of the session. So awesome, Mike. Yeah, Looking yeah. forward to it. Terrific. Well, Zach, thank you. We, uh, uh, we're excited. These are, these are some of the very first uh, tiny homes that were ordered from us. And the first one you just saw right there is going to come off the line uh, middle of next month, middle of May. And so these are the updates that we actually take and uh, send to the owners, right? So the owners actually can see what's happening uh, while we're building their homes for them. So it's, uh, it's neat. And this one, yeah, literally just last week came off. So um, yeah, and, cool. and thank you about yeah, it is cool. And, you know, and we have been doing this a long time, 26 years uh, we've been in business. And, and, uh, and, and what I'd like to cover today is just this idea of due diligence. As you mentioned, if people are thinking about buying property overseas, it, it's certainly exciting. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, but there are things that we should be doing as consumers uh, to protect ourselves. And, and that's really the, the big part of today's presentation. So I'll go ahead and get her started. Is that okay? Yeah, good um, stuff, Bob. <laughs> all right. Can't share screen. Well, I don't know, Zach. Well, we got dead air because I'm 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 slightly technically challenged here. Uh, not sure why I can't share that. Guys, just bear with me a second. I'm not sure what the what the technical issue is here. Uh, we've done this before, but for some reason, I'm not. Uh, You getting it, Mike? Or are you trying to figure out how to um, screen share? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's it's not letting me. Uh, I say you, I say share, and it won't. Uh, do you, is this share button grayed out? I can't. No, it says share, and then it says uh, can't share screen. It looks like we can't share your screen. Go to system settings to make sure the browser has access. Say okay. Huh. Yeah, when you jumped in here, did you uh, allow it to have access? Or you click like the um, allow access button. I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> you, you can always send over. Um, you can always send over the presentation to me, and I can go through the slides, whatever works. But um, uh, or you could try refreshing and see if that would work. Something along those lines. All right, let me try to refresh. We'll see. Sorry, everybody. What a no worries. All good. All good. It happens. Um, sure. Okay. Well, you know what? It doesn't look like it's going to let me, Zach, and I don't know no. how quickly I could actually get the presentation over to you. Um, Let's see. Uh, um, hmm. If you're, 
if you email it over, but uh, well, maybe hold on one second here. I can show the video too again. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Um, yeah, give me, I, I guess what I'll do is I will, we transfer this file over to you and okay. uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go a lot faster here. Um, Perfect. Okay. Yeah. While that's happening, I can probably, uh, you know, kind of start into some of the some of the things that I think are really going to be very relevant um, for us. But let me just get this we transfer started. Yep. Okay. Uh, Zach, you like the uh, Zach at kryptonite.co? Um, or the info at tinyhouse.com. Okay. No worries. Then we have a little bit of time here. Yeah, and and I, I kind of planned on keeping it, you know, about forty five minutes. So we'll we'll be okay. I apologize to everybody uh, watching. You know, the I, let me let me tell a funny story, and I won't tell it later because it's it's part of the presentation. But you know, but the, the, one of the big challenges when we buy property overseas is that we don't know what we don't know. And back when I. Uh, I, I, we, we purchased a, a very large piece of property in Nicaragua in the year 2000. And in 2002, I moved there with my wife, Carol, and my two-year-old daughter, Amanda. And we, uh, uh, we moved there in October. And we, I, one of the directors of our company, uh, Ernesto Leal, uh, happened to also be the president's chief of staff, president, Nic president of Nicaragua, President Bolaños' chief of staff. And so Ernesto was getting married between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, I got invited to the wedding and my, Carol and I both got invited, but she'd already made plans to go home and, and spend time with her family. And, and, and I figured it was pretty important to you know, stick around and go to this wedding. So in between Christmas and New Year's, Ernesto gets married. I get to the wedding and I find myself seated at a 10 top table with the president of Nicaragua. Now, this is pretty cool stuff, okay? This, this is really cool stuff. So, so I'm sitting there and, you know, weddings are long and it goes way into the evening and, you know, people are obviously coming by the table and talking to him and whatever. But, but literally for, for, you know, four or five hours, for the most part, I didn't know very many people there. I'm sitting at the table. He's sitting at the table. I get to know the man. He gets to know me. The end of the evening, we trade business cards. He gives me his presidential business card and he puts his personal email address on it and so cool. And I think, all right, well, that's great. You know, anyway, so I go to the, go to the office on Monday and, and, uh, I think, you know what, I'm going to send him a, you know, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's, right? Because it's, you know, it's right in between the two. And, and, and we all know, you know, the, the song Feliz Navidad, right? Merry Christmas, y Feliz Año Nuevo. And, and the ñ sound, like Año, ñ sound is, uh, was an N, but it has this like little squiggle over the top, right? And, and I'm, you know, I'm just there a few months at this point, a couple, three months, and I've got my Dell laptop or whatever it was. And, and, and I have the N on my keyboard, but I don't have the N with the squiggle on the top. And I, 
And I kind of think to myself, oh, who cares? I mean, you know, uh, you know, Felice A N O Ano Nuevo and, and or Ano Nuevo. It doesn't really matter. And uh, uh, sadly, however, it it does matter because instead of wishing the president of Nicaragua a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, I wished the man uh, Merry Christmas, of course, and a Happy New Anus. And <laughs> so, I mean, like, it, it's just incredible. Like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't know how important a squiggle over an N is. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, 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 and sadly, uh, many of us, when we go overseas, we, 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 we miss things like that because we, we, again, we don't know what we don't know. And, uh, and, and, and that's a lot about what this presentation is. And, and, and in fact, um, Zach, you should have it now. I don't know how long it'll take you to download it, but, uh, it is now in your inbox and, uh, came there. And I'll make sure next time I figure out how to get my settings right so we don't have this, uh, this wonderful challenge. Uh, uh, but, you know, I think the, the, the key here uh, for us when we're, when, when we're going overseas is, you know, th there's two basic principles. There's the idea that we don't know what we don't know, right? A, a squiggle over an end. How important is that? Uh, but the other thing is we have to kind of forget what we think we know, because when we bring assumptions, maybe they maybe they hold water, maybe they don't. And 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 it's kind of interesting because you know it, it, the more familiar the environment, and I use Belize. I started working in Belize 26 years ago, actually longer than that. But we started our development company there 26 years ago. Um, Belize, it's English speaking, it's common law, uh, it feels very familiar. And so when things feel very familiar, uh, a lot of times we, we think, well, I can just bring these assumptions. Of course, it's like it is at home because they speak like we speak at home. The laws, you know, the English, the contracts are very familiar because they're in the, you know, the right format and, and other things. And, 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 and so these assumptions, you know, many times they're okay, but sometimes they're not. And, and, and this is where we get into trouble. And when we can take the two concepts, and they're two very different, right? We, need, we don't know what we don't know, and we need to forget what we think we know. And when we put those two things together, really it boils down to one, uh, one word, uh, humility. And, and that's the word that saves us when we go overseas. Uh, overconfidence, a brashness, those are the, the things that get us into a lot of trouble. Big assumptions, oh yeah, I know how to do this, uh, you know, bravado, those kinds of things. Uh, humility is our most powerful tool uh, in our toolbox when we go overseas because when we're humble, we will listen more, we will speak less, we will let our, I call it the radar screen, but we'll let our, we'll push out our radar screen and we'll, we'll pay attention to things that are happening way, way out there. And, 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 and then we got to think about them, right? And, and we have to live on our toes. I mean, that's hard to do. Live on our toes is hard to do because it takes energy. It takes mental energy. And, 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 and assumptions are very helpful, aren't they? Right? We flip a light switch, we assume the light's going to come on. We have to think about that, right? Um, but, but when we're overseas, when we're buying property, especially when we're making big decisions that run into the you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? We, we need to pay attention. We need to be on our toes and we need to pay attention to things that we might not otherwise pay attention to in our home countries. So uh, that, that, that's a big part of this due diligence. And one of the things that we're going to do is look at some examples. Uh, these, uh, I call them the 15 questions and, 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 and Zach, I'll, I'll give you a heads up warning. I tend to, I put a lot of slides in my presentation um, and I click them really fast. So like some of them, we're just going to like, boom, 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 right, right through them. So, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We've, we've killed a bunch of time. This is me. Um, let's, let's go back one slide uh, because I want to start on this. We're going to talk about due diligence a little bit more. We're going to talk about community and then we're going to talk about the opportunities. Yep. So we'll go ahead. Uh, you know, the first thing we have to kind of figure out is, you know, which country is right for me? Because again, we start at the biggest picture, right? There's so many places around the world. I say it's a world of options, right? Which place is right for me? And you can look at these pictures. All of these pictures are in Central and South America. And you can see just many different geographies, many different uh, types of living environments. And 
Uh, we'll click through a bunch of pictures now fairly quickly because I like to get people excited, of course, about, again, this world of options, all these different geographies, all the fun things you can do, volcano boarding, fishing. Uh, and I think there's six or eight of them. Yes, yeah, surfing's a big one. Golfing, of course, people love that. Uh, I think diving and snorkeling's coming up. These are tremendous activities that people absolutely come to the region. And this is what it brings us in, right? Exploring and cave tubing. There's a fun one. Uh, that, that's a real fun, by the way. Uh, and then, you know, Mayan ruins, enriching. And, and so all of these things happen and rafting. And it's so exciting. It's a, it is a world of options. And all of a sudden we get to next, boom, Margarita Madness. <laughs> this this is a horrible disease that people get. Margarita madness. You know, people come down on their vacation. They're hold uh, slow up there. One second. Uh, yep, there we go. Okay, thank you. You know, margarita madness. The reason it's so horrible is, you know, we get down there, we're rafting, we're exploring, we're diving, we're snorkeling, we're having the time of our lives, and then the next thing you know, we're we're buying a piece of property, and and we don't even know anything about the development or the developer or anything, right? It's margarita madness. And so what we have to do is slow down, which is the next slide, slow down. And, and, and then we can start to look at things. And, and we, the next slide is, you know, the old adage, right? We don't compare apples and oranges. You know, we compare apples to apples. And as you'll see in the next slide, uh, you know, not all apples are the same thing, right? Nuance is really important. And, and so, you know, this is part of this, we don't know what we don't know. And, and uh, we're going to wade into that now with some, some interesting visual questions that, uh, that really help us understand kinds of things that we need to focus on, right? We have to change our thinking. We have to become more humble. Um, let's see what we got, Zach. We'll, we'll kind of wade into it. I think you may be able to just kind of write. I covered this a little bit. We don't know what we don't know. I, I think the next slide is my my uh, wishing the president of Nicaragua a happy new anus, um, which uh, <laughs> turned out to be okay. We need to forget what we think we know. And uh, let's see, uh, next slide. And yeah, uh, hold here one second. Um, you know, the, we, we talk about this, you know, this, this world of opportunities, right? Uh, the, one of the things that, that's really important is for people to also understand it's not just the geography, the fun things that we can do in certain places, right? It's also where a country is on the development curve. And you see places like the Pacific Coast of Costa Rica, Panama, and, and the Highlands, you know, they're more familiar, lots of people going there, but the prices are higher, right? But we can expect the similar kinds of services that we would see in the United States. Whereas a country like Honduras or Nicaragua, Argentina, El Salvador, they're not as popular with the U.S. marketplace. Um, we're more likely, this is important, we're more likely to face culture shock when we're in, when we transition to moving into a country like this, right? It, it's going to be different. It's going to be different in, in some significant ways. Um, but the prices tend to be much, much lower. And so this is a spectrum that we kind of have to understand. And, and, and we have all of this in one of our resource guides that we'll send to you. And we give you the ability to, to grab that in a few minutes. But uh, let's go on to the questions. I think the questions are next. And we can kind of dig into, yeah, ask better questions. So the first question uh, that we come to uh, is access. And uh, let's Go ahead, Zach. Well, I don't know. Yep. Is there year round access? Right. And, and, you know, a lot of roads are, are dirt roads and, but in the rainy season, you know, they look like this. Okay. Um, you know, can you get there in the rainy season? It, it's a real question that we need to find out. Uh, and, and the best way to find out, of course, is to buy the property in the rainy season. If it's a paved road, you, you know, you can get there. If it's a dirt road, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, the next slide deals with access as well. And this is, <laughs> I mean, this is common in Latin America. In the dry season, that is a dry riverbed with no water in it. Here it is with some water in it, but sometimes the water gets all the way up to the edge and you cannot get across it, right? So th these are important things and obviously bridges and, and uh, you know, aqueducts, things like that to get you across are, are the way to go. Uh, see what the next question is. I think it has to do with uh, infrastructure, right? I, I think we're all very spoiled with high-speed internet. Uh, it's pretty easy to test out, but we should test it out. So I think the next slide just shows some of the, you know, the equipment. We were the first fiber to the home network in all of Central America because back in 2005, because we understood how important bandwidth is. 
Uh, yeah, the next slide, actually uh, one that my wife hates. It's it's about infrastructure and stormwater. Um, you know, yeah, it's oh, go back once, two slides. Go back. There we go. Infrastructure, un, you know, not very sexy. But if we go to the next slide, you'll see that putting in stormwater drainage is critically important because how many of us want our house to wash away the first time there's a big rainstorm? Uh, none of us, I hope, right? And so these are the kinds of things that we need to simply ask the developer, hey, let me see a copy of the stormwater engineering, right? It's simple. They either have it or they don't. And if they don't have it, we might want to think about walking away. Uh, next slide. I think it's about uh, comfort, maybe. Can't remember. Yeah. Oh, oh, I like this one. Sorry. We get to comfort next, but question the absurd. Look at this question. I mean, look at this question. Is the home or condominium plumb for hot water in all the bathrooms? You know, coming out of North America, I think we would all just kind of go, um, duh, yeah. But if we look at the next slide, you'll see the picture that not all bathrooms in Central or South America are plumbed for hot water because what you see there is a beautiful condominium in Costa Rica, nice bathroom. You know, I think it was just under $400,000, but you know, it's a million dollar view, right? Um, but when you climbed on your hands and knees and looked under the sink, what you actually saw was a cold water pipe coming out of the wall with a Y splitter so that both of the taps up on that sink right there that you see have water coming out of them, but they're both cold and so's the shower. And so the question is, is would we want to know that before we buy, you know, the home or the condo that there's hot water? So, uh, again, we have sometimes we have to question the kinds of things that are absurd. This would fall under. We don't. Sorry. We need to forget what we think we know. Right. That we of course, it has hot water. Of course, the bathroom does. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. So. All right. Next slide. Uh, it's a comfort question. And that this one, you could probably, you know, live, you know, without, I mean, everybody can take a drip shower, but, you know, if you're out uh, uh, riding horses and you come home and you, you hope there's hot water, but you also hope there's a lot of water, right? When you take your shower. So again, these are the kinds of things that are important. So we'll kick on to the, to the next couple slides, get through this. And, and, uh, and then we get to, I think it's a question of uh, uh, the, 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 the ability of the developer to deliver, um, right. Is a development company financially sound? One of the most important things you can do as a consumer. Uh, next slide is an old commercial uh, that you guys probably remember. You know, where's the beef, right? I don't know if you guys, an old one. I, when I was a kid, I don't know how many folks are baby boomers on here. But, but the next slide is actually how we should be as consumers uh, coming, you know, from a famous movie, of course, you know, show me the money. Because, you know, if, if you go to the next slide, you'll see. You know, businesses that are in business have the ability to provide financials, right? So if you're buying a piece of property overseas, you should ask the developer, show me the money, show me your financials. You know, I mean, this is, you have every right to ask this question because remember, we're moving from a system in North America of, of seller beware, right? With all the consumer agencies and, and all the protections and, and all the laws and regulations to protect consumers, right? Um, but when we go south of the border, we get into buyer beware. And we again, we just don't know how to do that. And so, again, asking if the development, you know, do they have a track record of success? Do they have a competent team? Uh, if you look at the next slide, this is our leadership team at ECI. It is a tremendous group of people. These are folks that have been with the company, uh, some for, for decades, a couple decades now. Uh, and many of them are, you know, they're all seasoned professionals. And then, you know, this is our leadership team. The next slide actually shows an org chart. I think it's a little out of date. We get about 140, 150 folks uh, in the organization because if you have a development company, if you're building homes, then you have to have you know lots of people in leadership and many, many more people to actually get the job done. So uh, we'll go on to the next slide. And uh, again, these are the kinds of things that that become very important. And 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 one last little quickie. Nobody likes paying homeowner fees. I don't. I don't know anyone that's excited about paying homeowners fees. But if you look at this question, the second sentence there, are the fees high enough, right? Are the fees high enough? And 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 if we go to the next slide, you'll see an advertisement uh, that was uh, I, I pulled it out and stripped away the names of the people because I don't want anyone coming back at me. But look at this. Look at this, this, this at the second paragraph there. The maintenance fee for these lofts is one of the most attractive things. $350 a year. It's not a mistake. I said a year. 
right there. That's what that's see. So they're using this unrealistically low condo fee as a selling feature, right? Well, guess what? Nobody can maintain condos with pool and, and elevators and security and lighting on $350 a year. I don't care what country you're in. And so this is, this is BS is what it is. It's just BS, right? And what happens is, is people get excited. They buy it. The developer sells all 20 condos or whatever it is, put some money in their pocket, and they go home. And then a year later, all of a sudden, the fees are $350 a month. But you didn't budget for that, right? So it's irresponsible. At the, at the best, it's irresponsible. You know, it's probably worse than that. So anyway, we need to know, are the fees high enough? We, need to, we the consumer, have to figure this stuff out. Um, and then I always like to add this piece because this is our segue into community. We talked about doing due diligence. Now we're going to talk about community a little bit. Um, can I do good? Can I make a difference? Can I find significance in my time overseas? And one of the things in Latin America, and and you can click through these uh, just maybe you know a few seconds on each, Zach. Um, you know, it, it, there is a tremendous ability to make a difference and do wonderful things when we own a home and we spend time, whether it's uh, on, on environmental issues, sea turtle rescue programs and hatcheries and things like that. These are all things that, that we do. And we encourage our owners and our residents and our, our guests to come in and, you know, participate in beach cleanups and work in our sustainable gardening and, and help folks around us uh, to do some of the same kinds of things. Uh, school projects, water projects. Uh, again, there's just so many ways that we can make a difference in in the lives of the people around us. I mean, we are very, very blessed in in North America, and 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 we can bring a lot of those blessings with us and help others. But the cool thing is, when we do it, we're hanging out with other people from our community and the larger community. We're getting to know people, and we're doing wonderful things, and we're building friendships, and we're building relationships. Uh, and this is the hallmark of quality of life. You know, we talk about community. Yeah, we can keep going, Zach. Uh, community requires people. And if you want to have people, you got to have all the things we just talked about. Access, creature comforts, amenities, and then obviously addresses, homes and condominiums, places for people to be. And then we can get into the fun stuff again. And you can click through these fairly quickly, Zach. This is just sort of a repeat of the great fun activities, right? And, you know, reality matters, right? We can golf. We can do the sea turtles. Uh, we have neighbors. We have people around. Uh, a beautiful tiny home community we have under construction. This is where the video was shot uh, that we showed a few minutes ago uh, in our Grand Pacifica community right there by the water. These are our 20, first 20 tiny homes over the water going in Belize right now. So again, creating community, creating places that people want to be and enjoy the company of one another. And, and if we'll pause one second on this, uh, you know, a lot of times people really hit me with this. I mean, think about this, right? Um, you know, you, you have a higher quality of life and says with and underneath that, sorry, Zach, it, I guess it didn't come through on your PowerPoint, same way, with a lower cost of living, right? This is the paradox, right? A higher quality of life with a lower cost of living, right? It's the Mobis strip. I hope you guys have seen the Mobius strip. I mean, it's a one-sided piece of paper. And if you don't believe me, look it up. It's fun. It's a, it's, it's a cool little trick. It's not a trick. I mean, it's a thing. It's a one-sided piece of paper, right? And we'd say, how's that possible, right? Well, how is it possible to have a higher quality of life with a lower cost of living? Well, it is in Latin America. And we can kind of flip on through a couple more of these. And, you know, we get to, we get to eat uh, organic. I mean, it, well, actually, it, it is a convergence of affordability, wellness, vibrant locations. But when I lived in Nicaragua, I lived in Nicaragua for 14 years, okay? 14 years. We ate organic fruits, vegetables. We ate free-range meats. Uh, we had fish right out of the ocean, hormone-free. We And it was so cheap. It was insanely cheap. My wife had a woman give her a massage. You can click on. My wife had a massage in the house. The woman came to our house to give my wife a massage, and it was $16. Uh, you know, so, I mean, these are the kinds of quality of life where you'd say, well, gosh, that is a higher quality of life, and it costs a lot less. And if you want to do things like volcano boarding, and you know, keep going, Zach, we'll just plow on through here. You know, volcano boarding, you know, all the fun stuff. Go fishing. It, it, it's so inexpensive to rent a panga and go out deep sea fishing, surfing, surf lessons if you don't have to surf, uh, golfing, you know, $20 a round for that. I mean, Pebble Beach, that'd be, I don't know how much that would be at Pebble Beach, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars, right? So again, lots of things just so affordable when we get down and, and we can do these wonderful things. Uh, 
and 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 as digital nomads, which many of us are, right? We can actually get this lifestyle and still keep our jobs and still do what we do to earn a living, right? So we can go snorkeling in the afternoon, right? If we're, or or on the weekends or whatever. We don't have to going we just wade into the water right and go kayaking or do any of these fun things and and so th this is why people are moving this is why people are coming and uh it, it is a very very rich environment to live in to enjoy uh and this is what's driving the sales and and so as we get to the end of these we're going to come back and we're going to give you the opportunity here in just a second to actually download the full consumer resource guide there are 15 uh, go one more, Zach, and then we'll we'll stay on this next slide just for a second. Um, so, if you would like to get a copy of the Consumer Resource Guide, uh, this is this covers all fifteen questions. I think we hit maybe four or five of them there, and and it's got some articles. It's got some other ways that we can start to change how we think, right? So, uh, the QR code there will take you to a landing page. You can download the Consumer Resource Guide. Or you can hit this, uh, send us an email to info at ecidevelopment.com and we'll, we'll email you a PDF. Uh, this resource is exactly how you will want to do your due diligence if you're looking at owning a property overseas, any property, tiny home, condo, anywhere outside of North America. Uh, this resource guide will be priceless for you because it'll help you think about the things that you wouldn't normally think about. It will help you to. Uh, ask better questions, ask the questions that really matter uh, in this case. So, all right, well, let's let's move into a little bit of the opportunities that we have out there now that we've talked about how we can uh, make sure we we ask the right questions. We've been around for, uh, again, 26 years. Our, our our motto is that we deliver inspired lifestyles for adventurous souls. And, and look, if you're in the tiny house uh, uh, community, uh, this community right here, the online community, if you live in a tiny home, you're thinking about owning one, you are absolutely in the adventurous souls category. Uh, this is, while it's, it's, it's becoming more popular, it is not mainstream. And, and you, you really can pat yourselves on the back for being forward thinkers and, and adventurous souls. And, 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 and if doing something outside the country uh, is, uh, is something you'd like to do, I think we'd love to chat with you a little bit more about that. So, Zach, let's take a look at a couple of the countries and a couple of the projects here that we've got coming up. Um, I think we all understand why we're doing this. We can work from anywhere. Uh, if we can work from anywhere, then home can be anywhere. And and uh, I like then you know, a vacation becomes a lifestyle, right? So uh, th these these are the wonderful things that we get to do. And when we do it inside a, a, a tiny home format, we can make it very, very affordable uh, for us to be able to launch and, and, and begin to do it, you know, right now, right? Um, I think the next slide is our our uh, our first project. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, the the homes uh, tiny, eco friendly, sustainable. We'll talk more about that in a minute uh, when we get towards uh, the end of the presentation. Hit a couple of the the countries that we're in just to give some idea of you know where. Uh, uh, well, the smart, I, I get, well, you know, I, I won't have to spend a whole lot of time on this. You guys are very familiar with this. Let's, let's jump a couple more, maybe Zach, and we'll get to the, uh, we can come back and talk about any of this in the Q and a as well, if, if folks want to do that. Uh, but I want to get to some of the, uh, uh, the tiny homes in, in Latin America. The first, uh, the first one I believe that we come to is it's either Panama or Honduras. I can't remember what order they're in Zach and we'll, yeah, Panama, um, you know, a lot of people know Panama. Panama has been uh, on that that curve uh, that we showed at the beginning on, you know, uh, comfort and familiarity. Panama uh, delivers a lot of that. You know, the Panama Canal was uh, a U.S. property for for 100 years. And many, many parts of Panama became Americanized to, to say that uh, other parts have not. We uh, you know, there are parts of the country that are, you know, still very, uh, very un-Americanized and, and, and they're spectacular. Um, so you can kind of get a whole spectrum in Panama. But generally, the country, it, it's a U.S. dollar economy. It, it uses the U.S. dollar. Uh, a lot of English is spoken. If we're looking at an easy place to transition into Latin America, uh, Panama certainly is, is one of them. Um, next slide is our uh, starting to highlight our our, our Highlands property, I guess it didn't come through, so we're not going to highlight it. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, yeah, keep going. It was a picture of our property, but um, tiny homes, uh, beautiful homes in what we call springtime all the time. 
uh, where it's a, it's a, it's in the mountains, it's in the foothills of the mountains, about 3,500 feet above sea level. And so you get what we call springtime all the time. The temperature at night is 65 to 70. The temperature in the daytime is 80 to 85 every day of the year. Uh, the next slide, I think, uh, will show a few of the home uh, models that we have there. And uh, you can get an idea of the terrain. There it is, kind of in the in the foothills. And uh, the little town of Boquete is nearby, uh, just a wonderful, uh, wonderful little town. It has a lot of expats, a lot of great restaurants, uh, even has a rotary club and, and other things. Uh, Honduras is our next location. Uh, again, some of the formatting on these slides didn't make the transition, but uh, these are some beautiful homes on the Caribbean uh, facing the island of Roatan. Uh, again, tiny homes there under construction right now. Uh, go ahead, uh, Zach. I think we have a picture of one of the homes uh, being built. Yep, one of the homes being built uh, and uh, uh, just a neat, neat project that's uh, that's underway. I think our next slide is Belize, maybe. I'm not sure. I think it's Belize. Oh, well, it's some renderings. I'm sorry. That's good. They came through. Yeah. Belize. Belize, of all the countries in Central America, is probably the easiest for a North American to transition into. Uh, the next slide, we have some of the highlights, but you know, they really focus on things like English as the official language, uh, English common law. Again, the contracts, you can read them, you can understand them. The rest of Central and South America is civil law. It's a very different type of legal system. The contracts are very different. Even when they're translated into English, it's not as familiar. Um, and so Belize, for people who are looking for, I would say, the easiest transition into Latin America, uh, uh, it, it certainly is that. Uh, the next slide, it's, uh, it starts to show our, our, what we envision for our, our, our test community, these over-the-water homes. Uh, the next slide is actually uh, where we are just a few weeks ago. I had a, we had a drone up. You can see the homes are there. They're going in. They're under construction. Uh, these are over the water. They have a hole in the floor. Uh, well, not a hole, a glass over a hole. But anyway, you can actually look down and, and, and see the water and the fish and the plant life uh, underneath these homes. It, it, is, it is absolutely spectacular. I think we have a few more construction photos. But the nice thing is these are being built right now. Uh, yeah, so just a few more here. Uh, get to some of them. And there they are under construction. So uh, coming online, they'll be the, the first 20 homes will be finished in September of this year, we have another phase of 20 to 22 more that we're going to be offering. So if folks are interested in uh, seeing uh, those, uh, send us an email, info at ecidevelopment.com, right? Belize Tiny Houses uh, or Honduras or Panama, something in the subject line, and we'll make sure you get information on those properties as they become available. Uh, I think next slide, we move into Nicaragua. Yep, Nicaragua, uh, a country that's uh, a lot further down on that popularity list, right? It was towards the bottom of that. Um, I lived there for 14 years, loved it. Uh, the culture shock was you know, you know, interesting. Uh, I think, you know, if you have a good sense of humor and you're, and you're kind of flexible and, and you have that humility, uh, you can adjust to culture shock. And, and, it, and it really isn't that bad, but, um, but it is real. And, and we always like to tell people that, you know, it, it's going to hit you at some point. Um, uh, but it has one of the lowest costs of living. Uh, again, we had a bag. I mean, this is insane. We had a coffee sack of fr organic fruits and vegetables delivered to our home every Tuesday, and it was $8. I mean, I, I, you joke, if you got a whole paycheck, you know, Whole Foods, right? Whole paycheck. I mean, one tomato costs $8, right? I mean, it was so inexpensive, and it was such an incredible quality of life. Um, and... Uh, uh, and the and the other, and we'll get to get, maybe pop to the next slide, and and we start to talk about some of the tiny home product there. Um, you know, that, in fact, but this was our phase one, by the way. So there, uh, if we can go back just one split second, Zach, uh, it's important because one of the things that that I think a lot of times is lacking uh, is when developers are gonna do something. You know, we're gonna build this, we're gonna build a community. I mean, we have uh, over a hundred addresses between condos and homes. Uh, we have about 70 people living full time. It, you know, this is the original phase one traditional homes at Grand Pacifica. Um, this is a vibrant, real community today. Uh, and, and what's happening now with the 77 homes, the new tiny homes that are under construction, um, you know, it's a new neighborhood for Grand Pacifica. And we can go on and take a look at what those 
uh, look like. Uh, it's two, uh, uh, two modules of 50 tiny homes. They're about 100 yards from the beach. The video you saw earlier shows the beach in the background. I mean, you're right there by the beach, a beautiful uh, surfing beach, a uh, beautiful river, estuarial river that runs around. And, and on two sides of this, uh, one side is orchards and the other side is a, uh, a large, about four hectare piece of property that we have now uh, plowed and given over to the residents um, to begin uh, a fully organic uh, res uh, agro-resilient gardening system as well. So uh, great stuff happening and important stuff, actually. Uh, next slide. And maybe it's a, a couple of the construction pictures people can see. Uh, some of the renderings. So these are these are renderings of the final product. Here are the homes under construction uh, uh, coming out. The first of the homes will be done uh, next month. And then, you know, as they come out through the back end, we should have all I think 82 have been sold uh, to this point. So we should have all 82 completed by the end of this year. Uh, people moving in. There's the relationship to uh, the ocean, obviously very close and the surfing beach just off the side to the right. So and the beautiful swimming beaches as well, as you can see, the waves are coming in, rolling gently uh, and the water is warm. I do want to say that the water is warm. I know it's Pacific Ocean. I know that's odd for anyone in California, um, but the water is 80 degrees, 80, 81 degrees, and it is comfortable. You can get in that water and spend hours in it, and it's very, very comfortable. Uh, and again, just a beautiful place to swim and learn to surf. And uh, so, yeah, I think we're we're coming to the end here. Zach, I, I still want to try to leave a little bit of time. The next steps, uh, I think the next slide has one important uh, factor, and that's about residencies. Yeah, and again, the, the formatting is a little bit messed up. I just want to mention this because if you know if you're buying an investment property, a vacation property, then the uh, the the one on the left, which is a tourist visa, is fine. No, no big deal. You can come in with a tourist visa. You can stay for you know 60, 30, 60, 90 days, whatever the country allows you. It's easy, right? If you plan to be there any period of time, say 90 days or more a year, maybe you're a snowbird, maybe it's full time, uh, then you're going to want to get some type of residency. Uh, and our property consultants can certainly help you with that as well. Uh, they're very, very trained in that. And then some people actually want to go all the way to citizenship. Not many, but some do. Uh, and so we, we have the ability to help folks uh, get either permanent residency or citizenship. Uh, and if it, again, if it's a vacation property or an investment property, uh, then the tourist visa is just fine. But understand, this is a very important part of the process as well. So uh, next slide. I think we're getting to the end here, guys and girls. We're, uh, I think we're almost done. Yeah, here are our property and residency consultants. Uh, great folks standing by to answer questions, get on the phone with you, uh, walk through the kinds of things that are important to you. Again, because we work in, in four countries today, we have El Salvador uh, coming up soon. We, we, we have a beautiful uh, property there that's uh, owned by our joint venture partner. If you're into the crypto space, his name is Mike Peterson. He's known as the godfather of Bitcoin in El Salvador. He's the guy that got all started there. Um, he uh, He's our business partner. So uh, we've got great people. We have a great team. Uh, we've got great experience and, and, and really tremendous resources. Uh, we do take crypto. It's not just Bitcoin, but we take Bitcoin and other cryptos. Uh, financing is available. If, if you want to own a tiny home, uh, uh, we can help make that possible. Uh, and, uh, and there are other opportunities for accredited investors as well on the investment uh, side of things. So I think we're done, Zach. If we go to the last slide, it's just... Uh, uh, okay, pathways. I mean, yeah, the, you know, by the way, real quick, the financing, there's some terms. We can send all that to you. Cryptocurrencies, obviously, you can pay with cash. Uh, we also take metals, and that, that's something that uh, people need to know. I mean, if, if people want to own their home, they've got gold, silver, other precious metals. Um, we have a vault in Wilmington, Delaware, that you can uh, send it to, insured, you know, obviously, brings whoever, um, but we'll take metals as payment. And then if it's an investment, and this is in, they're critically important for a lot of people, owning a tiny home is an investment, right? They're going to they're not going to use it. It's going to be a rental property. Uh, uh, you can actually do that inside a self-directed IRA as well. So I think that's it. Then next slide just sort of has our contact information, ways to get a hold of us. Uh, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I, I wish I was. Uh, this is horrible. But anyway, uh, keep going, Zach. Let's get to the end. I want to give people a few minutes for Q&A. Uh, one, one second on this one. One more time. Consumer Resource Guide, 
tiny home info packet. Um, if you guys want to scan those, we'll we'll uh, we'll stay here just for a minute. Uh, I think this is a good time to maybe ask for some Q and A. The next slide, I think, is just you know the whatever the phone number and the email address, and we can stay there for a minute too. But uh, uh, Zach, if uh, do we have any questions? I don't know. I'm not sure where I would look to see for those, but um, right, that's us. Info at ecidevelopment.com. Uh, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, if it's something you'd like like to do, we encourage you to get on an airplane, come visit, you know, put your toes in the sand and, and do some of those fun things. Right. But, uh, but, but make sure you ask us all the te- you know, tough questions. And we, we, we hold ourselves out as you know, 26 years in, in business. We, we do a great job and, and, and we, you know, we, we, we expect to be challenged as well. So uh, come visit us, take a look at what we're doing, enjoy yourselves. And, and if owning a tiny home overseas is something that, you'd like to consider, you know, get in touch. We'd, we'd love to, you know, have a conversation about it with you. Awesome, Mike. That's super great. Loved uh, the presentation. And sorry, I was a little bit uh, back and forth with the slides, a little glitchy there, but. Um, That's right. You did, a, you did a great job. Thank you. You're like a fan of like, turning the, turning yeah. the up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, super cool. I didn't, I didn't know people did uh, volcano snowboarding. That looks like yeah. a lot of fun. It, it is way fun. I, I, yeah. I have an adventure. I won't tell you about it now, but, but if you come to Nicaragua, like you said, you're going to come to Nicaragua. Yep. Uh, yep. We, we will, we will go volcano boarding, but also sledding okay. so that the kids can do it too. And yeah, that'd be yeah, fun. Yeah. That'd be so fun. fun. It is yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, there's a couple questions here. Susan Cran- uh, Krasnow, Cranson, I'm not sure how to say it, but uh, she wanted to ask, um, she had three questions, one access to top medical care two safety and three is COVID related travel rules. Hmm. So, wow, that's can... a lot to unpack real fast. Um, you know, s- safety is one of those questions that, that comes up a lot. Uh, I I've always said that, you know, crime is local. If you said is, is Chicago dangerous? It depends on where in Chicago, right? Some parts of Chicago, very dangerous. Other parts of Chicago, not so dangerous. So, you know, I think that's true around the world, right? There, there's no, you know, Nicaragua. Is it dangerous? Well, some parts are, most of it's not. I lived there for 14 years and, and we never had a problem in 14 years, right? Um, so again, I think safety is a, a question of locality, not generality. Uh, medical care, uh, I'm going to ch- help maybe change a paradigm uh, on medical care. And I'll use Nicaragua as an example, but but I'll touch on a couple of those. You know, Nicaragua has a population of six million people, and ten percent of those people are what we would call U.S. middle class or higher, right? They're they're and 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 probably two to three percent of those people are very 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 wealthy. I mean, you know, net worths in the millions of dollars, right? So if you have you know, uh, uh, 600,000 middle class people, and you've got maybe 150,000 kind of millionaires, guess what they all want? World class medical care right there in their hometown. Um, we had all of our medical procedures done in Nicaragua. Uh, 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 Panama has a Johns Hopkins facility. Uh, uh, Costa Rica has the SEMA system. Uh, the, the healthcare in Latin America. Uh, is tremendous. Now, it's not widely available, and that's the problem, right? I mean, 90% of the people in Nicaragua are very poor, right? And their health care varies from, you know, horrible to, to good, um, you know, but but for, 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 for folks who can afford to pay for health, by the way, I had this conversation tonight. I'm in Portugal, and I went to dinner with uh, a, a couple uh, friends of mine here, and and we were talking about how uh, medical care, and she she also has a home in Colombia, in Medellin, Colombia, and she's a single woman living in Medellin, Colombia, half the year, and Portugal half the year. Okay, so Medellin, Colombia, single woman, a safety. There's your, you know, right. But we were joking how the the cost of medical care at full payment is usually less than what copayment is in the United States for the for the same treatment, right? And it was the, that was for us too. Uh, and then COVID protocols vary widely from country to country. Um, you know, Nicaragua, again, I'm not, I'm not selling Nicaragua. I, you know, I, I love it personally, but um, Nicaragua was one of the freest countries. They never locked down. They never had mass mandates. If you think that's a good thing, great. Think that's a horrible thing, then, you know, don't go there, right? Uh, Costa Rica and Panama had very serious lockdowns. Panama is extremely strict lockdowns. Um, you know, and the whole country was shut down for almost a year, maybe a little longer, 14 months. So, 
different countries had different responses to COVID. And depending upon your feelings about that, you can put yourself into a country that aligns with what you believe, uh, you know, you want for yourself in terms of, you know, COVID, COVID safety, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I've, I've heard, uh, that oftentimes in those like kind of tourist or uh, countries or the countries that basically rely on tourism, they're mm -hmm. super, super protective over their tourists because they need them in order to continue to yeah. have their economy sustained and whatnot. So there's right. oftentimes like little towns, they'll be way more protective over random tourists than a lot yeah. of the like the local kids and whatnot, because they know that nothing can happen to the tourists. Otherwise, it'll get out in the news and that'll mean right. that there's less visitors and so on. But Right. And, and, you know, I mean, the thing is, is, you know, in the United States, the government gave everybody a check, right? I mean, it was all mm -hmm. the, you know, right. Big day businesses, they get people, they just handed out money like crazy. Right. Uh, in, in almost everywhere else in the world, there was no money to hand out. And if, if tourism stopped, which it did for six, eight months, I mean, people lost their jobs and people went hungry. And, and I mean, it was, it, it was an absolute tragic situation for most of the world. You know, we, certainly, I mean, obviously lots of people, you know, died in all over the world, including the United States, uh, but in these countries too, but they also felt an economic, uh, 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 just, you know, hammer on top of their heads that, that many people in the U S and, and, and Canada just didn't. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Cool. Well, I think we're just about at that one hour mark there. You ended up yeah. going longer. We went longer than we thought. <laughs> well, no, but, but thank you, Zach. And and by the way, one thing I didn't put in here, and if it's okay, I just make a little plug. Um, you know, the the tiny, uh, the tiny homes actually. Uh, people, it, no one asked the question, but you know, our tiny homes start about one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. So again, puts it in the realm of affordability for a lot of folks. You know, eighty percent financing, so people can put you know, say thirty down, something like that. Uh, finance the rest. We have a lot of folks that have done that. Um, so uh, again, I, I, I didn't want this to be a commercial, but I also wanted to at least let folks know that, that, you know, a home a hundred yards from the Pacific ocean, right. Starting at, you know, $130,000. And, and, uh, and then that, that's a really, really cool thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, very cool. And you can also rent out the place when you're not there. And it's super, you guys have yep. it dialed in. So it uh, makes yeah. it super affordable. Oftentimes, if you just live there six months out of the year, you could probably almost have it paid for. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it is. Yeah. Ah, well, thank awesome. you, guys. I, Zach, thank you so much. And, and I, I love what you're doing. Keep up the good work, man. We're you know, we're, we're just so excited to be part of, of, of this movement. And I know you're at the forefront, you know, plowing your way ahead. And, and, uh, and I thank you for that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, you keep making some really cool designs and we'll uh, keep sharing them and whatnot. So absolutely awesome. good stuff, Mike. Well, always fun. Indeed. Take care. We'll Zach. See you later. Take care.